and started the timer and here is your question please Right, so if you have read and understood, kindly begin your station now. Uh, hello, my name is Dr. Bilal. I'm the doctor on call today, working for Mr. Alice, consultant. Uh, I need to speak to a consultant on call regarding a patient. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm here. Summarize your case. Thank you so much. So I have got a patient. She's a 54 and she was initially admitted with a mild diverticulitis. Uh, recently, she has developed severe pain in her left lower limb. Uh, we have done some scans and found out there's a, a acute limb uh, ischemia. Also on ECG, we found that there's an atrial fibrillation complex. And the uh, bloods show, ABGs show metabolic acidosis with hypokalemia. So in view of her uh, acute pain, we are suspecting acute limb ischemia to uh, refer the case for your care. Is it that important? Cannot you wait till tomorrow morning? Uh, since it is uh, acute is lower limb, uh, it is important uh, to get surgery to save her. Okay. Uh, what about uh, this uh, preventricular contraction and natural fibrillation? Do you need uh, cardiology review for that? Uh, we can get a cardiology review at a later time. Uh, currently, at the moment, I'm important to salvage her limb first. And uh, what do you think uh, her previous diagnosis of uh, diverticulitis? Do you want to change anything? Yes. You think it would be the mesenteric ischemia? Uh, there are quite few things possible, but since she is having atrial fibrillation and acute ischemia of the left lower limb, uh, the number one differential diagnosis at this time would be uh, mesentic ischemia. Some other things like acute pancreatitis or infective colitis are also, also a possibility. Would you like to do any uh, uh, contrast in that CT scan? If her liver function is okay, uh, we will check her uh, liver function test, uh, kid kidney function test. If creatine is okay, we can go with CT scan with contrast. Otherwise, we will do the duplex scan of her abdomen for mesentric vessels. Okay. And uh, how do you manage this case before that? So in the meantime, we will try our best to manage the hypokalemia, uh, atrial fibrillation, and... Uh, Okay. Correction yeah. of metabolic acidosis. Correct. Correction of metabolic acidosis. So, uh, regarding atrial fibrillation, how will you manage that? Mm -hmm. So, for a if a a atrial fibrillation, we will start her on uh, anticoagulation therapy with 500 international units of uh, uh, heparin and uh, treatment dose of uh, low molecular weight heparin. Mm -hmm. uh, who will you involve in that? 
uh, we will discuss with ICU consultant for uh, cardioversion therapy. Okay. So, if uh, you need an ambulance, so what type of ambulance would you like to get for this patient? Uh, the ambulance with all facilities available, including cardioversion and CPR uh, instruments. As you said, the, the risk of uh, there is a, uh, most probably it is ischemic limb. So how do you manage the ischemic limb? So we can initiate, in, in, uh, start with the uh, embolysis and then embolectomy uh, with uh, next option could be bypass. Good. With or without fasciotomies. Very good. And if the limb is not viable, then in, unfortunately we will have to go with the uh, amputation. Uh, what will you discuss with the family of the patient regarding the transfer? So I will discuss the situation with the patient's patient and patient's family, and I will ex explain them that due to sudden blockage of the blood vest, the blood supply to the uh, leg. Uh, the viability is under threat and we need to restore the blood supply immediately. And to get that done, we need to shift the patient to a hospital where vascular surgery facilities are available. Okay, okay. you can send the patient over. Thank you so much. Okay, before you go, you summarize everything that you have discussed so, with the consultant. Yeah, a brief, a, in a brief uh, summary, uh, I've referred you a patient with a, who was a 54-year-old lady with acute left lower limb ischemia. She has got a, atrial fibrillation and uh, her ECG changes show broad preventricular complex. She also has hypokalemia and uh, her ABGs show metabolic acidosis. Uh, the arterial, the scan, arterial scan, uh, duplexus scan done shows acute ischemia of the left lower limb, which needs urgent vascular surgery care. And you have a yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Uh, did you ask so, uh, if the cardiac? One more thing. Yes. One more thing, ma'am. Yes. Actually, when you summarize it at last, at the end, you yes. you must ask uh, this question that uh, do you want me to do? Do you advise me to do anything for this person yes. right now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You yes. have to ask that also. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And did you ask yeah. him uh, if you need cardiologist review for PVC before? Yeah. Yeah. Transfer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because in yes. the middle I lost the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And otherwise you, it was good. Do you want to scan the abdomen first? Yes. He. He didn't told okay. me about okay. that. Yes, he told me. He told me that. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. When you were telling about the anticoagulant, then you should also tell uh, over how much seconds you'll give bolus dose and then uh, infusion and then how, because when you are telling the anticoagulation, then you should mention the whole dose, how it will be. Yeah. Actually, follow up. You have to follow up with the APT test. APT test. And yes. this APT test should be between 45 to 60 seconds, exactly. not more than that. Yes, should not yes. be more than that. So this should be mentioned. Yes. Actually, I don't know, ma'am, if this is correct or not. Usually we do uh, I uh, international normalized ratio. INRO usually. Yeah, actually, do. this is confusing for me as well because uh, yeah. here in our, in, in our trust, what we do is if there's any. Uh, and coagulation required, we start the patient on the treatment dose of delta parent, which is low molecular weight heparin. So okay. this uh, this heparin, uh, unfractionated, only the cardiac surgeons while doing the open heart surgery, they, they use in high high units. But otherwise, yes. it, otherwise we directly go for the treatment dose, which is the prophylactic dose of low molecular weight is 5,000 units. Every single patient who is admitted for any surgery will get. If there is an indication like this patient, those patients go for 15,000. So it is a safe approach. Examiners ask you just tell that uh, we will follow, I will follow my trust guideline, which includes X, Y, Z, blah, 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 whatever you want. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But when you say that I will follow my trust guideline, you are on safe. Yeah, yeah. Or nice guidelines or yeah, trust guidelines. Yeah, yeah, so the, yeah the trust guidelines are always uh, under shadow of nice guideline. Yeah, so yeah. that's yes. to be on the safe side. 
or according yeah, right. to the yeah Yeah. For example, the my, my trust are always by the Delta parent, but some other trust which are in like Bristol or in London, they have got a different type of anticoagulant. Uh, so it is safe to say say just I will follow my trust guideline. Yeah. And usually it is like Delta parent or low mole low molecular weight heparin uh, treatment dose. It is important to say treatment dose because otherwise they will think that you don't know the treatment dose. Treatment dose is triple the time of prophylactic dose. Uh, I I was asking about how will you follow up? So the the delta the low molecular weight therapy doesn't need any follow up. Yes. It doesn't need any 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 regular blood tests or any hematological re yeah. review. Yeah. So, what about un? Yeah. What about the, unfractionated? Unfractionated and warfarin they need. Unfractionated is checked with the APTT as written here, and the warfarin is followed up with the INR. But now it is what they are doing. Instead of warfarin, they are doing they are giving patient apixaban BD dose, mm -hmm. which doesn't need any monitoring. So and that is why they shift from unfractionated to fractionated with low molecular because it doesn't need monitoring. So yeah, please, right. yeah, it is very difficult for doctors and patients to do monitoring. So that is why they are choosing treatment which doesn't need monitoring and safe for patient in long term. That's true. Yeah. Good. Thank we are you also so using unfraction. We are also using low molecular weight heparin here. Yeah, if you. No one. Yeah, I was just reading this on Nice guideline today uh, afternoon, few hours back, and I I couldn't find this uh, unfractionated heparin. Yeah. If you can yeah. just check, we can follow. We we can discuss it. So discuss this with uh, hematology friends, and we will let you know what they say. Yeah, that will be good. Start with the timeline and show results. Right. So, if you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination. Okay. Uh, I entered the room and I washed my hand. Yes. I introduced myself to the patient and uh, I confirmed the name and age of the patient. Yes. Then uh, I uh, tried to take the permission from the patient to examine the cranial nerves and the head and uh, facial area. Uh, I started uh, the examination by uh, <coughs> taking a close look uh, to ear and uh, the face swelling any loose battle sign any other sign of uh, basal skull fracture any bleeding from the ear nose or any i also then feel for any uh, temperature or tenderness then uh, <coughs> Uh, I asked the patient if he if she needs any painkiller or anything at that time. Then I start asking the patient to raise the eyebrow. I started to examine the facial nerve. For that, I asked the patient to raise the eyebrows for temporal branch. Then I asked her to close the eye and resist while I try to open them. Then next, I will ask to blow the cheek. Later on, I asked to I uh, saw her teeth, and then I asked to tense the nasals. After that, I asked the patient uh, uh, that if she has any taste sensation problem or not. If she had any taste sensation, then I'll the taste for the, uh, I'll do the examination of taste sensation. And then I asked the patient if she noticed any change in the hearing recently, and uh, so, so I I started with. Uh, 
whisper test. Uh, I covered the right ear and uh, uh, rub it, uh, try to rub the tragus of the patient. And then I said a word, I will say a word, uh, keeping our, any number by keeping my mouth about uh, 15 centimeters from the left ear. Uh, and ask the patient to repeat the same word or number. If the patient repeats the correct number, then I repeat the test at the arm's length from the ear. And uh, if you see that uh, normally the patient perceives at around 60 cent to 60 centimeter, the whisper test should be positive. The patient should be here on the heart. Then uh, I'll also test the other ear in the same way to compare it and see if the other ear is also affected or not. Then I'll do the Rennie's test. I'll use the 512 hertz tuning fork. I'll tap it and then keep it at the front near the uh, external, uh, auditory, external auditory meters. How would, you, how would you interpret if there is positive Rennie's test? Uh, if there is a, a Rennie's test is positive, it means that the air conduction will be more than bone conduction. Good. So it is uh, normal. Okay, good. Yes. And then I'll go uh, to the same on the opposite side. Then I'll uh, do the Weber's test. For that, I'll place the tuning fork uh, after tapping it with uh, over the midline at the forehead of the patient. Then ask if uh, which ears she can hear the better. And normally, the sound will be heard equally in the both ear, but in the sensory neural deafness, this, side which has sensory neural deafness, the patient will heard louder sound uh, on the uh, normal side. And uh, in conductive deafness, it will be louder on the affected side. After that, uh, I'll ask the patient uh, to, mm, mm, to uh, march on the spot with the eyes closed and arm out stressed. Yes. What, what would you... Uh want to test this uh, I actually want, want to, to I, I want to test the vestibular nerve vestibular nerve testing yes. uh, if a patient remains in the same position yes. then it is normal but uh, if uh, there is any vestibular nerve lesion the patient will uh, turns uh, to the side of the lesion okay and, uh, after that uh, uh, I'll uh, do the uh, ask the patient to open her mouth and say ah, and I look for a, there is any deviation of uvula or soft palate, and I also ask the patient to cough and assess the any uh, vocal cord adduction or not. But uh, then I ask the patient to turn her head against the resistance of, uh, against the resistance of my hand and uh, see if it is uh, normal. Then I ask her to shrug her shoulder against my hand to see the spinal accessory nerve. And finally, I'll ask the person to stick out the tongue and uh, touch, I'll, uh, the, uh, touch inside the cheek and press against my finger, which I put outside the cheek. I'll see the uh, hypoglossal nerve is intact or not. Then uh, I'll uh, do the, <coughs> use the otoscope to see inside the ear for tympanic membrane, look for it is um, the intact. How, how or, would you read the uh, yes. And which side is it? Uh, Ma'am, uh, it, it, it is the right side of the tympanic uh, oh, membrane. It, it depends on the cone of light and yes. the. Um, um, Where should cone of the light should fall? Uh, cone of light should fall on the five o'clock side on. Uh, in case of the right side and seven o'clock on case of left ear. Okay. Bell has gone, so can you please summarize your case? Okay, uh, I'll thank the patient and then I'll to complete my exam. I'll wash my hand to complete my examination. I'll do the full examination of the all cranial nerves. Okay. And uh, <coughs> so today I've examined uh, 23 year old this young girl. So, cranial nerve and the uh, ears. I noticed that there is a moon conduction is better than the air conduction. That is 
a negative urinary test and uh, so what is your sound, provisional diagnosis? Sound heard louder than the affected ear. So depending on that, my provisional diagnosis is unilateral conductive hearing loss. And on uh, uh, otoscopy, I found that there is a hemotype panel. So it says there is maybe the fracture of base of a skull. How should this uh, patient be managed? Uh, <coughs> what investigations would you ask for and how would you go about managing? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I'll advise the present uh, CT scan of the brain and the audiometry. And also I'll consult the ENT consultant uh, to review the case for the further management. And, uh, and I'll send the all routine blood investigation, complete blood count, urea electrolyte, and uh, blood glucose, uh, glucose profile, and uh, ABG. Yes. And uh, then I'll discuss the case with the ENT consultant about the same for her uh, ear deafness. Okay. Can you explain it to me? How would you fit otoscope in the, in the patient for the examination? Uh, actually, to fit the otoscope, I'll uh, yes. uh, hold the pinna and pull it upwards and backwards so that the external auditory meters will be straight. And then I'll position the otoscope at the external auditory meters, holding it uh, in my right hand like a pencil. And yes. then uh, do it, uh, uh, I rest my hand against the patient's cheek uh, so that it will be stable. And then I'll advance the otoscope under direct vision. Yes. And okay, uh, for the opposite side, I'll change the hand. Yes. Uh, what uh, management or treatment options can you offer this patient? Um, Depending upon the investigations that you asked for. Uh, actually, uh, if there will be a uh, basal skull fracture and hemotympanum, yes. and uh, I. You can ask for CT brain and then you can maybe ask for ENT review. Audiometry, yeah, yeah. That's totally audiometry and then, yes, maybe can send it, uh, refer it. Yeah, I, that I do. Discussion in, uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, anyone want to say anything? Yes, right here, right hand. Left here, left hand. Yes, very good. Uh, to hold the uh, from right otoscope for right ear will help hold it in the right hand and for left ear will hold it in the left hand. Yes. And uh, the opposite hand I'll use for pulling the pinna. Good. Yes. Here is your question. Right. Considering a critical care scenario, can you please tell me how are you going to plan to manage this patient? Uh, I'll manage this patient according to the uh, ABCD format, uh, according yes. to care of critical surgical patient in this protocol. Yes. I'll see the airway and breathing and the circulation. Uh, I'll put uh, two large book uh, IV cannula and start yes. the IV fluids and uh, send the blood again, uh, send the blood for uh, uh, investigation, blood routine investigation. And uh, <coughs> then I'll 
uh, <coughs> advise the um, uh, abdominal X-ray and uh, ultrasound if needed. Okay. How are you going to plan uh, fluid management for this patient? Uh, I'll uh, uh, start the, <coughs> the uh, uh, crystalloid, uh, give the fluid challenge 500 ml first, 500 ml in one hour, and again uh, monitor the uh, pulse blood pressure and urine output and uh, see. And then again, I'll uh, uh, see if we're not responding, then give another 500 ml challenge and see if she's responding or not. Okay. Patient, uh, blood pressure is low and heart rate is high. Uh, how are you going to take care of uh, patient's vitals? I'll uh, see the pulse, blood pressure, and uh, urine output. Yes. And, uh, and uh, yes, uh, peripheral perfusion, I'll see the capillary blood refill, if it's returning to normal or not, and uh, urine output also, yes. Yes, okay, uh, yes. What else would you consider? Patient has low potassium. Yeah, actually patient is yeah, having- is high. Uh, yes. Uh, low sodium and low potassium level. So I'll also give uh, patient the potassium supplementation uh, along with the crystal whites. Yes. And uh, I'll monitor the patient uh, uh, with the ECG also. Okay. In a patient who presents with uh, 12, just for just suppose like this patient, 12 episodes of bloody diarrhea, uh, what type of anemia do you uh, expect to see? If it is a prolonged uh, bloody diarrhea, the patient will have uh, microcytic hypoxemic anemia. Okay. So how, okay. So do you think patient, uh, okay. Uh, no, that is not done. Okay. What test would you ask for to confirm if it's uh, chronic or if it's acute bloody diarrhea? Yeah, uh, by seeing the complete blood count and blood fill, We'll see if it is the uh, it is the MCB. It is um, MCB is raised or uh, low. Whether okay. it is uh, yeah an MCHC also I'll see also the MCSC and yes. these together will show us that whether it is normal cytic, normal chromic, microcytic, hypochromic or macrocytic anemia. Can you come up with some uh, differential diagnosis for the bloody diarrhea that this patient had? Yeah, uh, actually it can be due to inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease or uh, ischemic colitis or infection like infective colitis due to Clostridium difficile or Campylobacter jejuni or uh, Amiric colitis, uh, bacillary dysentery, and yes, uh, tumor like a uh, colorectal carcinoma. Where would you be managing this patient? I'll manage this patient uh, uh, depending on the its uh, uh, condition. I'll manage this patient in the uh, HTU or ICU. Okay. okay. Uh, why would you trans? Uh, would you consider trans? The transfusing blood? Uh, not right now, as patients, uh, hemoglobin is uh, not below the seven. It is uh, eight, yes. uh, I think more than yes. eight. So uh, it is not uh, indicated. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, patient is also might have uh, sepsis due to this infection and bloody diarrhea. Yes. Maybe C is in sepsis. So we like, that is also a contraindication of transfusing blood. Okay, uh, what would you uh, what would you think of or what would you look out for, which might be the ultimate reason uh, for uh, or which might be the ultimate indication for surgery, immediate surgery of this patient or urgent surgery of this patient? Uh, <coughs> because you uh, actually, the patient has a yes. Yeah. Uh, after uh, I'll see if there is any perforation any obstruction or uh, 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 obstruction 
and that is any uh, toxic mega cologne which yes. is not yes. uh, which is not responding to medical treatment yes. or uh, any uh, uncontrolled uh, bleeding or ha hemorrhage yes yes uh, what kind of surgical procedure would you go for uh, if uh, we are suspecting the colorectal carcinoma then we will go for the pan proctocolectomy and okay. with the do the ileostomy if uh, you will do the abdominal x-ray what are you going to look for okay. in the abdominal x-ray of the patient yeah uh, uh, in abdominal x-ray uh, we will see the uh, what we call thumb printing sign very good anything else why and, would uh, there be yes thumb printing uh, thumb printing is because the due to the inflammation the normal hostra yes. becomes thickened and uh, this gives the impression of the thumb print in between the uh, air filled lumen can That's you appreciate why this... thumb printing in this uh, x-ray that you're looking at uh, actually and um, this is distorted but as I remember, it is on the uh, uh, left descending colon. We can see on the left sided descending colon in between the air, there is a uh, thumb You said patient could have a sepsis. How would you define septic shock? Septic shock, yes. Uh, what we call the uh, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Which uh, uh, no septic shock. Okay. Yeah, septic shock actually sepsis with uh, hypotension, which is not responding to the uh, IV fluids, is called septic shock. What might be the reason for that? In uh, septic. In a uh, yes. Uh, oh. uh, this septic shock. Uh, Due to the inflammation, due to the septicemia, there is peripheral vasodilation, and it causes the uh, decreased peripheral resistance, and so the blood pressure falls down and causes okay. uh, last Bell has gone, but then if you do yes, the ABG of this patient, what should you uh, expect to see the result? What should be the result? Uh, this patient, I'll see the metabolic acidosis. Okay, good, very good. Yes, well, let's go. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good.